Hello everyone, it's Carrie. I hope you're having a fabulous holiday season. I'm so excited because in today's video I'll be sharing the process of making my most recent Cindy Lauper doll, her look from her Merry Christmas Have a Nice Life album. So as you may know, I've made several Cindy Lauper dolls because she has such a huge fan base and I've had lots of requests. But this one is extra special because she's currently on eBay auction through the link below in the description and 100% of the sale will go to True Colors United in the buyer's name. So I've been wanting to do some sort of fundraiser for this organization for a while now and I felt like this was the best time because this month Cindy Lauper was the first to be honored with the High Note Global Prize from the United Nations for her advocacy on LGBTQ issues and as a longtime ally she co-founded True Colors United in 2010 which as stated on their website is an organization dedicated to innovative solutions to youth homelessness that focus on the unique experiences of LGBTQ young people. So if you're interested in purchasing this doll, please check out the link below in the eBay, to the eBay auction. I'm starting out, out at a really low price, but I hope that we can raise a nice gift to give these really important efforts. So on with the video. So I'm, I used the uh, an Ever After High pair of stockings to use sort of as a pattern to make the stockings that I was making for her, and I made them out of tulle. And I found this, I was looking for some sort of like furry kind of cozy fabric to make into a sweater like she has in the photo shoot. And I've actually found this pair of socks at, I think it was like Walmart or something. And it was just this cozy pair of red socks. And I thought, well, that's just the perfect fabric. It's nice and stretchy so it can pull, be removable by just pulling it over the doll. And also um, just... It had had a good size knit for scale wise so I didn't use a pattern I just kind of winged it by tracing the doll sort of and cut it out and and added some sleeves so now searching through my stock of Monster High and Ever After High shoes. I'm just looking for a pair to use that kind of fit the look. And when I'm doing this, I like to pull out colors that are sort of similar. I'm, I want sort of reds and pinks, just in case there's any um, any kind of see-throughness to parts of the paint that it the base isn't such a drastic difference that it would be noticeable, if that makes sense. So then. I'm using a carving knife, knife to remove some of the details that just don't make sense with this look, like the little teeth and stuff. I think these were actually, uh, I don't know, you guys probably know whose shoes these were, so I'm not going to speculate, but it looked like they had like sort of claws or teeth coming out of the back. Very cute. And so Monster High. So I'm using this new Arteza, well I'm not sure if it's new to the company, but they sent me this uh, b box of outdoor acrylic paints and I'll be having a video coming up soon where I'll be showing how I um, use it but it's a, a real it's an outdoor paint and it's self sealing so it's durable and also has a sealant in it so that you don't why well, still added a, a coat of sealant to this afterwards but um, it's really good for not cracking I've noticed so I use that on the shoes you just have to make sure that it dries for a couple of days before putting any sealant over it so it doesn't turn sticky so for the mittens, I just used some uh, felt, some yellow felt, and stitched them around and turned them inside out. And then I keep everything while I'm working on the face up in a little baggie to the side, just so I can keep my work organized. For her hair, I rooted her with some 100% alpaca yarn in this really pretty yellow color. And just sort of combed it out a little bit and then I put it up in a ponytail so I could wrap it while I work on the face up. I added some glue to the, I use this tacky glue. It's a nice thick glue so it won't seep through the holes while it, before it dries, but it uh, will ho hold very nicely once it's dry uh, on the ins the keep for keeping the hair from shedding. So I gave her about four or five coats of Mr. Super Clear and then starting to shape her eyes with a white Derwent watercolor pencil. So showing a little bit of how I'm doing the tear duct and the waterline. If you're a supporter over on Patreon, I have 
a tear duct and waterline video in the library of rewards available to those uh, $5 and up tiers. So I'm using this Faber-Castell Art Grip watercolor pencil for the line work and I, I like to do the detail work with this pencil and then go over it with go over certain areas with the Derwent because it's a little bit darker uh, and it shows up a little bit nicer but the, this is really particularly good for fine lines very small tiny lines uh, when I need to keep the line a bit, a bit thinner in certain areas. And the supplies I use are in the description box below there's a link to my Amazon storefront and there you can see uh, the supplies that I use as well as some details that I've written up on how I use them so it's a really nice feature and you of course you know you can use it without making any purchases but if you do make some purchases from that link I do get a small commission So I shaped the lip with some pan pastel in red, and then I'm going over that with a watercolor uh, Derwent. And I want to say this is scarlet red, but I'm not quite sure. It might be vermilion. And then I'm using a white to blend that out on the bottom lip to give her a little bit of a highlight, and then blending it out even further with a Q-tip. I'm using this darker red Derwent to sort of darken in the corners of the mouth in certain areas and give her a little bit of line work. Also, just an FYI, if you are in the North Carolina, sort of Charlotte area, uh, well, actually, uh, in specifically Lincoln to North Carolina, I'm, I'll be doing a class on February 1st, and it's an all-day workshop where I'll be teaching a little bit fur further than just the basics. My initial classes that I taught in September were like beginner classes and this one it will will revisit some beginner stuff but then we'll go further into intermediate uh, techniques and uh, just a lot of good stuff there like I said it'll be like six hours long so it's gonna be a nice length of class so that you could really leave with a full face up done and uh, it's in a, a nice gallery in Lincoln North Carolina called gallery 27 and it's a, so it's a nice space and it should be a lot of fun. The other classes were super fun and I think these, this one will be too. So make sure to uh, check out the, I'll put the link to the class in the description box below. So if you are in the area and interested in uh, attending that class, it will be on February 1st and I hope you can join us. So I'm using various greens to sort of mix together and give a little bit of dimension to the eyes and blending them out with some yellow and white 
down near the bottom to look more like a highlight down at the bottom of the eye. And then I'm going back in and adding some lines. I'm using my Caran d'Ache Museum Aquarelle in a dark green color for the outline and line work. I'm adding a little bit more uh, variation to the colors by using a terracotta in a Derwent watercolor. And I'm using that Faber Castell Art Grip for the eyelashes because they are, because like I said, it keeps a nice point and can make them nice and light and feathery. So onto the pupil, I've kind of, sometimes I do a solid black pupil and then sometimes I like to play around a little bit since this isn't a commission, I'm just kind of, kind of deciding to play around a little bit with the look of it and not fill it in entirely. And just blending it out with some other greens. One thing that I've been doing with eyebrows is I've been just kind of marking the sections. I didn't so much do it with this one, but I kind of do a dot at the beginning and then a dot where I want the arch, the height of the arch, and then a dot on the outer edge. And then I connect all of them. I guess I didn't really do that with this one, <laughs> but when it works really well when you do it that way to keep them even and in the same shape. If you kind of just add a dot where you want the height of the arch and then one on either side and you can just kind of connect the dots. So I'm giving her a little bit of a beauty mark here because in that photo shoot she gave herself a beauty mark. So <laughs> there she's, there's her little beauty mark next to her eye. And then adding some uh, highlight dots with a dotting tool and acrylic paint. So there she is. And then of course I added some gloss and uh, varnish and eyelashes. So once again, I hope you guys will uh, check out the link below and bid if you're interested in owning this special edition doll. It's going to an excellent cause. And as always, if you like this video, I'd love it if you gave it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And I hope you guys have a wonderful holiday season and happy new year. Here I'm just doing the hair and I add a little bit of styling gel and then my usual curling with the heating heating up the chopstick and then twirling the hair around it. And then I just gave it a trim and, uh, and separated the pieces. And then stay tuned here for the final photos and a little bit of a video of her final look. And again, once again, I hope you like this video. Have a great holiday season. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Bye!